All right, guys, so today we're going to create a tropical bird sculpture. It's gonna be a pretty silly looking bird with really long legs and pretty funky feet. So today we're going to start by creating the bird and then we will work on the base. When your clay project is out of the kiln, I will attach the legs. If I do that before I put it in the kiln, the heat from the kiln will cause these little thin wooden sticks to catch on fire and burn. So that's why we will put the entire sculpture together once it comes out of the kiln. So to create your tropical bird, you're going to have a piece of clay about this big. And with this piece of clay, we're just going to roll it. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Right now I'm just kind of squeezing it between my hands. Roll it up and down your hands and we're going to create kind of this curve or U shape. So with one hand, I'm just gonna bend this up, making like a curve. So my first step was to roll it into a thick coil and my next step was to create this curve. Now you'll notice that this curve is a lot smoother than that one. So I'm just gently gonna press it into the table. That will help smooth it. One way to also help smooth the clay is to use slip. Slip is watery clay and I made our slip with clay and some water. So there's my slip. And if I just massage that slip a little bit into the clay, pressing firmly, not using too much. I don't want it to get too wet. Think of it like lotion. If you put on too much, your hands just feel really slippery. But if you get it just right, it soaks into your hands, making them smooth. It's the same way with clay. So I'm just massaging a little bit of that slip into the clay keeping my U shape until it's nice and smooth. There we go, piece of cake. All right, so let's now talk about how to make the face of your bird. I'm gonna start with the eye. So for the eye, you can probably tell it's two circles of clay. Now your clay project is a sculpture, so you can't think of it just looking at it flat. A sculpture is 3D, that means you have height, width and something called depth, which means your sculpture has to be interesting looking all the way around. So to create the eyes, I'm going to use a big piece of clay and a small piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and make those on my mat first. I'm not going to attach them yet. I think that eye might be a little bit too big. It's always good to place it on your clay before attaching it to see if you have the size right. So there's an eye for this side. Now I'm gonna make one for the other side. So I'm gonna to try to make them about the same. It doesn't have to be perfect. Close enough, this one's a little smaller, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of clay to it. There we go. Now I need to work on the iris. The iris, as you know, is the colorful part of the eye. So I'm gonna make a smaller ball of clay. And if I want to attach, I always have to use that slip and the toothbrush. The toothbrush is creating little lines in my clay. That's called scoring. Gentle push on that to get it to stay. Same thing with this one. Now I have two eyes for my bird. Before I attach them though, I'm gonna go ahead and work on that beak. I'm gonna get all of the parts of my bird ready. And then my final step, it's just like working on a collage. Your final step is then to put it all together. So I've got my body, my two eyes. I'm gonna make sure that's about the right size. That's gonna look pretty good to me. Now let's work on the beak. You can have a toucan, which has a longer beak, or you could have a parrot, which has a shorter beak. I'll show you both ways. So let's start with the toucan with the longer beak. So I've got a nice big piece of clay. I'm gonna scoot this guy over just a little bit so I have some room. Roll this much like I did this piece of clay. So I'm gonna roll it into a ball first. And now I'll roll it up and down my hands a little bit. That's probably going to be way too big. So if you think your clay piece is too big, pinch off some of that clay. Try that again. A ball, a coil. That looks much better. Now I'm going to bend it because a toucan's beak has kind of got a hook look to it. Just like I said, it's a lot like the body. It's just a little smaller. Now I'm going to flatten it by just pressing it between my fingers, but making sure it's about the thickness of a cookie. And once I've gotten it flattened, now I need to open the mouth. So for that, I'm gonna use my stick. Be careful, the skewer stick is really sharp on one end. I'm gonna gently draw where I want the line of his mouth to be. The top of the beak is taller, the bottom is smaller. So I think that might look pretty good. Now that I have a line on there that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the way through pressing my stick into my clay like this. All the way through to the other side. 
don't worry about it getting shaped kind of differently because you can always fix it. Okay, now I see that this is looking pretty good, but usually this is more pointy. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to press gently and to get a little bit more pointy. If you make this and you don't like it, the great thing about clay is that you can roll it up into a ball and try it again. So there is my nice big beak for a toucan. Let's see how that's going to look when I attach. I think that's gonna look pretty good. I wanna show you though how to make a beak for a pair in case you want to do that instead. So I've got a piece of clay, roll it into a ball, squish it, and now a parrot, theirs, their beak is not quite as long. It's got a lot more of a hook to it. It's almost like an upside down letter U. So I'm gonna take my stick and just draw it on there first. There we go, I just kind of made an upside down U. Now I'm gonna put my stick all the way through. Open it a little bit. And there we go, let's see how this looks. And I'm always smoothing out my clay. Wherever there's lumps of clay, I always wanna make my clay nice and smooth. So I could have a parrot like that. So it's up to you if you want a longer one or a smaller one. I think in fact, since I've already made a toucan, I think I will make a parrot this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this nice and smooth. And the other thing I need to create is the little coil. This will go around the beak and help really attach the beak to the head. So let me get that part made too before I put everything together. So I've got a piece of clay. I'm rolling a long coil. A coil is like a snake of clay. You can either do it with your hands or you can do it on your mat by going up and down. Now that I have most of my pieces made, I'm ready to assemble or put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and toothbrush this side. And I can't just set the eye on there. I have to put it on there and wiggle a little bit back and forth. With my stick, I'm going to poke in to create a pupil for my bird to see with. There we go. Oops. Now, friends, just so you know, we will be putting feathers on these birds. So I will poke a hole. I don't want you to do it at the top and at the end so we can have some beads and feathers coming from the top and the end of our bird. So we'll be adding a lot more to this when it comes out of the kiln. Here's the tricky part. When you flip this over and to put the other eye on, you don't want to smash your clay into your mat. If you do, you might accidentally smush the eye. So with some extra clay, you can create a little stand for yourself. It's a little lump of clay so that I can kind of prop my bird up. I'm raising it up from the surface so that the eye doesn't get smashed. I don't want the other side of my sculpture to get mushed. There's the other eye. Now I'm gonna flip it back around and work on attaching the beak. Now this is a nice flat surface and I need this to be a nice flat surface to attach to. So I'm just gonna rub it or tap it gently on my mat to get it nice and flat. There we go. I think that's going to look pretty good. If I were attaching this one, same thing, tap it gently. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good too. I like them both, but I'm gonna go with the pair since I've already made the toucan. I'm gonna toothbrush one side. And just gently rub it back and forth to get it to stick. Maybe open the mouth just a little bit. There we go. Now this is going to really anchor the two pieces together. So I'm going to take this coil of clay and just rub my toothbrush down it a couple of times to add that slip and score and wrap this around. I think my coil's a little thick. So I'm gonna roll it a little bit smaller, make it a little thinner. If you can't do it in the air like I'm doing because that's not always very easy, you can always roll it on your mat. And let's see if this thinner piece, oh yeah, that looks a little better. Make sure you go all the way around. There we go. And it should look nice and smooth. It's a sculpture, so it should look really good on both sides. Now let's talk about how to make the wings. They're pretty easy. So to create the wings, all you'll do, let's see if we can get him to stand up. There we go. Is take a piece of clay Roll it into a ball. The piece of clay I'm using is about the size of a gumball. Squish it flat. You can do that right on your mat. So it looks kind of like a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now I'm gonna take my stick and cut it right in half. 
and that is how I'll have my wings. So I can have one on one side, one on the other side. I like to take my stick and drag my stick through. And what that does is creates a nice texture for my wings. So to attach my wings, toothbrush, and smear it just a little bit to get it to stay. I don't want to lose the shape of the wing though. And do the same thing on the other side. Now my bird is finished. The only problem is I don't want my bird to get squished, parts to get smashed or misshapen. So when we let these dry, what we'll probably do is let them dry on a piece of clay or maybe something soft like a piece of tissue paper that will help prop it up. Now that our bird is finished, we can talk about how to create the base for our bird to stand on. So creating the base is a piece of cake. It's so easy. All you have to do, let's see if I can get that guy to stand up. There we go. Is have a piece of clay, a nice lump of clay. So I've got just a random piece of clay. I'm going to mush it down into a lump. I want this to be our base. Sculptures often have a base. It's what they stand on. So I've got mine. Looks like that's going to be a pretty good base. I don't want my base to tip over, so I'm just going to press it gently by twisting it into my mat, spreading it out just a little bit. And this is going to be where I'll also be putting the two feet for my bird. There we go. That seems pretty stable. Now to create the feet. So to make the feet, I'm just going, I want them to be really silly. So in fact, I think I might even make my base a little bit bigger. So I'll have enough room for both feet. There we go. When you saw how I did that, I just smeared another piece of clay into it. This does not have to be smooth. We kind of want it to look like maybe a rock that he's standing on. So it doesn't have to be all smooth. I'm making it a little lumpy and bumpy. Make sure it's nice and stable. Now to make the feet, I'm going to use some coils. And I want him to look like he's got really big feet because I think that'll be silly. So I'm going to take a coil or make a coil of clay, but I'm going to keep it thick. So I'm going to make three of these for one foot. One, two, and if one's too small, you can always add more clay to it, but I don't mind that they're a little bit different. Three. Now, I'm going to put make this one a little smaller. Put them together like this. Overlap the two at the top like the letter A. Overlap this one almost like an E or the number three. Now I have one foot and I need to have space for another one so I might have to scoot this over. So again I didn't glue it yet because I'm trying to decide on the size of the feet. So I'm going to make my next one one. Two. And there's my third one. Let's see. Put them together like the letter A. Smush. If they're not sticking, definitely toothbrush. If you smear it enough though, it should stay without using the toothbrush. I think I like that one right there in the middle. All right, let's see. Now that one's a lot bigger than this one. I could put one on top of the other to try to make them about the same size. They don't have to be, but in order for them to both fit on the base, they probably should be. So I'm making them a little bit smaller. Let's see how that works. Looks pretty good to me. Some of my toes got misshapen. I need to now add a texture. So I'm gonna add a texture with my stick but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and attach. This time, I definitely have to use my toothbrush to get them to stick to the base. Spread them out a little bit. Smooth down any lumps. I want the feet to look smooth. That'll make them look different than the base. All right, now I have my feet. Make sure that they're going to stay. This one looks like it's not attached, so it's always good to give your clay projects the wiggle test to make sure they're going to stay put. Now with my stick, my last thing I'm going to do to those feet is just draw a line or maybe even just press. It's probably better to press your stick horizontally or sideways into the clay 
if you drag it through the clay, sometimes little bumps of clay will pop up that we call clay boogers, which are not very attractive. So that's why it's a good idea to just press that in there. If you want to add a little bitty claw at the end with your stick, you could do that too. In fact, I think I'll just leave mine the way it is. Now, when you're finished, what I will do is, and I don't want you to do this, I will poke a nice big hole right there and there, and that will give your bird a place to stand. So when we put the two together, whoops, that'll be a good place for your bird to stand. All right, guys, so I can't wait to see how either your toucan or your parrot turns out.